In this lecture, we are starting our project of building a truffle project that runs on a local blockchain with the Ganache command line interface and can connect to networks with Infra. Join me in your terminal or command line application and we'll get started. We're going to make a new folder called Hello Truffle. Then we'll cd into Hello Truffle. In here, we're going to use npm init to start a new npm project. We can hit enter through all of the metadata. Then if you list out the contents of your folder with ls on Mac or dir on Windows, you'll see you have a package.json file with all of this data. Our next step is going to be to install truffle. We can use npm install truffle save dev. That is going to install Truffle locally into the project. You can also install Truffle globally. Let's just give this a moment to install locally. Don't worry about all the deprecations. Those are normal and you don't have to worry about them for this project. You can check your Truffle version with the command Truffle version. We're using 5.4.22 in this course. And you can use a different version, but if you come across any problems, then just revert to this same version that we are using. You can also install Truffle globally with the sudo command on Mac or running the terminal as administrator on Windows. And then calling npm install dash g truffle. You have to enter your computer password if you are on Mac and this will install Truffle globally, so that is another option. If you are using the local version, you'll likely have to call npx truffle before you can just use the truffle command, so you have to always call npx truffle. Whereas if you're using the global version, then you can just call truffle version. All right, so here I can see I have updated to 5.4.23 this time. All right, now we want to initialize a new Truffle project. So we are going to grab Truffle and call init. This is going to scaffold a Truffle project. And if you list out the contents of your folder this time, you'll see you have contracts, migrations, node modules, package.json, a test folder, and truffleconfig.js. Now again, if the command Truffle doesn't work for you, then just use npx truffle instead. All right, so now we have a truffle project set up. Let's open this project with Visual Studio Code. Let's talk about the files that were created. First, we have a contracts folder, which contains one file, migrations.solidity. The contracts folder stores all of your Solidity files, which have the extension .sol. This is where you add smart contracts, libraries, and interfaces that you need at compile time. Migrations is a sample smart contract written in Solidity. At the top, you have the license, MIT license, then you have the Solidity version, followed by the contract itself, which has two fields. It has a modifier restricted. In here, we have a function. Then we have another function set completed. So this is a complete smart contract that you can use as an example and this is built by Truffle to ensure that your project's deployment to a blockchain is carried out in the correct order. Our next folder is migrations and this contains one file called initialmigrations.js. This is a JavaScript file. The migrations folder stores Truffle Deployer JavaScript files. Anytime you want to deploy a smart contract, you have to tell Truffle which smart contract to deploy and the constructor arguments that you need. So in this file, we have a requirement that we need the migrations Solidity contract. Then this file is exporting in a function via the deployer the migrations contract. So this is how we can deploy a contract. This is deploying our migration contract. 
This is the most basic type of deployment. There's no library linking or constructor arguments. We are just deploying a contract. Next, we have our node modules, which contain all of our project dependencies, any libraries that we want to use in the project that we install via NPM. Next, we have a test folder. This contains JavaScript or Solidity files, depending on what language you're using for testing. So in here is where you put all of your testing files, like acceptance tests and unit tests. Then we have package lock, which is just a locked version of package. This is a JSON file, JavaScript object notation. Inside of this file, we put some metadata about our project, like the name, the version, the description, and the main file. We also have a scripts property where we can put in shorthands for commands. Like if we call npm test, then we'll run this longer command. We can add in another script here like start. And then we could put in the longer form version for start, something like truffle start. This is just an example. So this is just the shorthand npm start for the longer command. And we'll take a look at some real commands later on in this project. Then we have truffle config, a JavaScript file. Truffle config is the main configuration file for your truffle project. So here you can put in settings for your truffle project, like networks, migrations, compilation, and testing. You can uncomment the ones that you need or keep this as provided. You can see more information about the configuration at the official documentation. Later on in the project, we'll look at how to deploy via Infra and how to get a mnemonic. So in here we have module.exports and we have several different properties like networks. Networks define how you connect to your Ethereum client and let you set the defaults Web3 uses to send transactions. Here we have a development network and you can just uncomment any of these once you need them. Then you can add more networks as well. We also have Mocha options for testing and we have our compilers. This is the Solidity compiler and you want to make sure that your Solidity compiler matches the Solidity version that you're using for your smart contracts. Then you have a Truffle database that you can use so here by default, it is disabled, but if you want to use the Truffle database, you can uncomment this. And that's all we have for now. We'll add more to this throughout the project. Truffle comes with many different commands that you can take a look at by going into your terminal and calling Truffle help. Here you can see all of the commands that Truffle provides such as truffle build, truffle compile, truffle config, truffle console. You can take a look at all of these and inspect them and even try them out to see what they do. It's a great way to learn about what truffle does. You won't need all of these commands, but they are good to have because perhaps one day for a project you will need them. Now let's take a look at how we can compile a contract. You can see here we have the command compile to compile contract source files. So we can use that with truffle compile as the command in our terminal in our project folder. Here we can see the message compiling your contracts, compiling the migrations.solidity contract. Artifacts are written to a new folder and we've compiled using this exact Solidity version. So here we can now take a look at the new file that was created in build slash contracts. Inside of my project folder, I now have a build folder and then the subfolder contracts. In there, I have migrations.json. This was just created. This JSON data file contains information about the compiled contract. It has the whole compiled bytecode with function signatures, events, docs, and compiler information. Some things to note are the ABI and the bytecode or deployed bytecode, which we can search for with ABI. And just find that, let's see, 
I'm going to search for ABI, the property. There we go. Okay, so right there we have ABI. This refers to the application binary interface. This is Ethereum's common way of interacting with contracts. This tells clients how to build transactions that will run on the contract and the events to expect. Next, we also have important part here, bytecode. Let's just find that. There we go, bytecode and deployed bytecode. The bytecode is what will run on the Ethereum virtual machine EVM. To deploy a contract to the Ethereum blockchain, you must submit the deployed bytecode as the transaction. The bytecode is containing everything stored as the contract. When you call a function, it can only interact with the bytecode in the Ethereum virtual machine. All right, so that is the migrations.json file created because we only have one contract, migrations.solidity. If we had more contracts, then when we compiled, we would see more JSON files, one per each of the contracts that we have. And we can talk more about our Solidity compiler version, which we see here is 0 0.8.10 plus a commit. So this is important when you want to prove that your source matches your bytecode. So this is known as a specific commit hash as our compiler version. So we have the compiler version plus the commit hash. That's because Etherscan's verification tool allows users to interact with your public contract, but you cannot upload your source by faith. Users will try to compile your code and the bytes must match exactly. Truffle Compile will search through your contracts folder and compile any contracts or libraries. If you have any import statements, Truffle will attempt to find them. And it's all going to be using this exact version of the compiler. Another thing to note is inside of our truffleconfig.js file. Here we can take a look at the Solidity compiler version. So S-O-L-C for Solidity compiler. We can see our version 0 0.8.10 and then we added that exact hash for the commit hash. Here you can also set your optimizer properties, enabled, true or false, and then the number of runs. This number of runs affects the trade-off between the contract creation gas and any other function call gas in the contract. So the optimizer by default will optimize the contract assuming it is called 200 times across its lifetime. If you want the initial contract deployment to be cheaper and later function executions to be more expensive, then you should set runs to one. This comes from the official Solidity documentation. If you expect many transactions and don't care for high deployment costs and output size, then set runs to a higher number. And you also have to enable the optimizer for that to work. So feel free to try out different values for the number of runs. All right, so now we've been able to create a new Truffle project and also compile the contract in the Truffle project and inspect some of the properties and understand the files in every Truffle project. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.